hi everyone welcome back today in this video we are going to understand how to prepare the double column cash book and we are also going to see a practical example on it but before watching this video please make sure you have watched the previous video of this chapter where we have discussed the single column cash book in very much detail and we have also seen a practical example of that okay so please make sure you have watched that video and then come back to this video now as i said in this video what are we going to do is we are going to see the double column cash book and you might have already know that we have two sorts of double column cash book the first is the cash and bank column one and another is cash and discount column right so what are we going to do in this video is we are going to understand the concept of of course the cash and bank column one and also we are going to specifically discuss the discount column properly okay what specific things are there regarding discount column but in this video we are going to only see the practical example of cash and bank column okay and then later in the next video most probably we will have a separate problem of the second sort of double column cash book that is cash and discount column is that okay right so let's start the video now see double column cash book is really simple the same sort of concept applies over here what you have seen in the single column cash book now what do we have in this double column cash book you all know as the name suggests itself we have two columns over here the cash column which is always fixed and then we have bank column or the discount column as the case may be right so what do you record in this you record all the cash transactions in cash column okay you will, there will be debit and credit you all know that you have seen the single column cash book format and in the bank column you will record of course the bank transaction or i can say in a simple english it is a book in which we record all the transactions which affects the cash balance of the business and bank balance of the business yeah simple as that but then you would say sir we can also have discount column what about that see in discount column what we record is see there are two sorts of discount you all know that trade discount and cash discount we had a video on that right now trade discount is not recorded yeah ignore that it's just deducted cash discount is recorded in the books of accounts right so what do we have what sort of cash discount we have we have two sorts of cash discount what are those two sorts of cash discount we have discount allowed the discount which we allow to the customers the discount which we give to the customers and we have the discount which we receive from our suppliers the discount which we get the discount allowed is an expense a loss to us right and discount received is a benefit to us it's an income to us revenue all right so what do you have these two discount should be recorded in that discount column so obviously the format is like this see here the same format double column cash book right in a single column cash book you had only one column but here you have two columns see here this is the debit side okay this is the debit side and this is the credit side so you have two columns over here and two columns over here cash bank column cash bank column right now this bank column can also become discount column so if it becomes discount column then understand properly it's very simple this is the debit side what do you do with expenses if expense increases discount allowed if discount you have allowed to someone then that discount has to be recorded because it's a cash discount so you will record it over here in the discount column okay on the debit side and if you have received the discount from your supplier or someone then discount received is an income which has credit balance so to record it you have to credit that okay so here it will be recorded on the credit side is that okay that's the concept you have regarding discount column but now there is one more thing that i want to let you know that is the same thing which we have discussed in the single column cash book you know cash book is an exception in the subsidiary books cash book is not the subsidiary book not only the subsidiary book but it is also the principal book it's also the ledger yeah cash book performs two functions yeah it serves two purpose the journal as well as the ledger account so if you are maintaining the double column cash book triple column cash book or single column cash book and what happens you need not prepare the separate ledger account of cash account and if you are also maintaining double column cash book not single column double column cash book then you need not prepare the bank account also the bank ledger account also okay but this thing does not apply to the discount column 
because discount column which you will have over here it is not like a ledger account why why is that because we do not have a single discount over here in cash discount we have two sorts of discount discount allowed and discount received so it's not treated as a single ledger over here yeah it is not balanced it is just simply you know total yeah you just make a sum out of it discount column that's all so see here if you are maintaining double column cash book then you are not required to prepare separate cash account and bank account in the ledger if you are maintaining double column cash book with cash column and bank column then you should not yeah you are not required to prepare separate ledger account of cash account and bank account yeah that's not required but if you are maintaining double column cash book with cash and discount column cash and discount column then what will happen there is no need to prepare separate cash account in the ledger but but the discount column is not treated as a ledger account it is not equal to the ledger account so that is why what will happen separate ledger accounts are required two ledger accounts are required why is that because you all know here we have discount allowed here we have discount received these two things are opposite you cannot what do you say balance those discount columns over here you will just make a total of that and that total can be different it will be different okay totals will be different there is no balancing in the discount columns and those things those recording will go into the discount allowed or discount received separate separate ledger account is that okay that's the entire concept regarding the discount column which i just discussed with you guys right now and this will also apply in the triple column cash book triple column cash book where you will have the cash column bank column and the discount column yeah the same concept applies over there also this entire concept okay so that's the thing regarding double column cash book all right if you are maintaining double column cash book with cash and bank column no need to prepare separate ledger account for these because all the transactions are already recorded in the double column cash book in continuous order all the transaction that affected the cash and bank balance so if you are maintaining a separate cash account and separate bank account ledger account then it's just duplication of the work yeah there is no benefit out of that why are you duplicating the work yeah it's useless so that's why no need of separate ledger account but if you are maintaining the cash and discount column double column cash book then this is not equal to the ledger account discount column so separate ledger account of discount allowed and discount received is always required always you don't have choice all right that's the concept and then now we have to understand the format you know double column cash book it's simple the same you know the format applies debit side credit side yeah you have two columns right cash and bank cash and bank so what do you do on the debit side what you will take you will take all the receipts and on the credit side you will take all the payments why is that why are we taking receipts over here and payments over here what's the logic behind that see the logic is really simple cash and bank both are your asset right whenever asset increases what do you do you debit so that's why see cash is increasing because you have received rent to rent bank balance has is increasing because you have received commission let's say so two commission so you will write the amount in the bank column it's simple it's not difficult at all yeah asset account has debit balance if it increases you will debit and why it has increased you will write the reason over here to rent to commission received yeah whatever it is okay and let's say the bank balance has been decreased because of some reason let's say you have incurred some expenses okay you have paid rent for example or paid electricity bill so what will happen bank balance is decreasing go to the credit side write the amount in the bank column because bank balance has been decreased because of what because you have paid the electricity so buy electricity as simple as that that's how you will do the recording in the double column cash book is that okay yeah that's the entire thing okay but now there are some critical factors that you have to understand regarding double column cash book which are very important for you to understand i will just give you a glance right now see here critical things to understand uh bank balance can be negative yeah overdraft see here this is an asset account yeah it's same like an asset account cash and bank so you all know we take you know debit opening balance over here and closing balance will be on the credit side and then in the next period this will be carried forward over here yeah two balance brought down isn't it if this is 31st december then on the 1st january this thing 
this entire thing will come over here yeah you know that now what happens is sometimes see here I will discuss this right now right here only uh, bank balance can be negative now what can happen see the businesses will open a current account with the bank and current account if the bank allows they will have a special facility that is uh, you know overdraft facility what is overdraft facility the business can withdraw more than what they what the balance they have in the bank account for example you have only 5000 in your bank account you can withdraw 10000 5000 extra so what will happen to your bank balance your bank balance will become negative from zero it will become minus 5000 because 5000 balance was there you have withdrawn 10000 that facility you have okay the bank has provided you with that facility overdraft facility so you have withdrawn 10,000 so your bank balance has become minus 5,000 so when it becomes minus 5,000 and the question will start from there the bank balance they will say in the question uh, you know uh, there is an overdraft balance in the bank of 5,000 what does that mean it means that you have you know taken like a loan from the bank so you don't have debit balance you have credit balance credit opening balance so this will not happen to balance b by d 5000 no it's not like that you will take it over here by balance b by d 5000 okay that's how you will take it all right so opening balance can be on the credit side of the bank but this thing will not happen in the cash account i have told you in the previous video because see cash payments cannot exceed the cash receipts if you have 500 can you spend 600 no if you have cash 500 can you spend 600 cash you can't do that whatever cash you have only that much you can spend but with the credit cards and with the overdraft facility what is there you don't have the balance in your bank account still you can spend more right so because of that what happens the asset account bank which is your asset it kind of becomes your liability but we still treat it as asset only so what we have to do the opening balance must be taken on the credit side that's the logic okay i hope you got this this is a one critical point that you had to understand then there are two more points that is the contra entry and checks in hand let's understand that now what is this contra entry see it's very simple contra entry happens when a single transaction is affecting only the cash account and the bank account and that too at the same time for example let's say you have deposited 100 rupees into the bank so what has happened because of this transaction the cash in your hand decreased because it went into the ATM machine. So bank balance increased, isn't it? Yes. So what you will do, how you will do the recording of this transaction. For example, let's say there are no subsidiary books. Then the simple journal entry would have been bank account debit because my bank balance increased, right? So bank account debit, asset is increasing, you have to debit 100 and the cash, which is also my asset is decreasing so i will credit 100 bank account debit to cash isn't it so this sort of entry is called as contra entry why because a single transaction has affected the cash and bank account at the same time and the effect is equal there is no other account involved in this transaction only bank and cash account yeah that's what a contra entry is now how you will record this in the double column cash book See, it's simple. Understand this properly. It's really simple. See double column cash flow properly. Here you have cash column, bank column, cash column, bank column, credit side, debit side. So what has happened because of this transaction? Bank balance has increased, right? So bank has been increased. Yeah, bank has been increased. So right in the debit, you know, in the debit side, 100 in the bank column because bank balance has increased, right? So write 100 over there. Why it has increased? Because you have put the cash into the ATM machine. Yeah, in the bank so to cash yeah that's how you will take now the second effect of this transaction which is the decrease in cash will also be taken in the double column cash book only that's why it's called contra entry also okay see here the second effect now usually what happens whenever you record any transaction only half of the effect either debit or credit is recorded in the cash book the other half will be recorded in the other ledger accounts right for example if you had paid rent through cash then what would have been the uh, entry you know the cash balance decreased because you have paid rent so buy rent would have come and then what would have happened the other effect would have gone to the rent account in the rent ledger account but here in contra entry it's not like that the entire thing will be done in the double column cash book only see here first half i explained you 
bank account increase because of the cash the cash which you put in the atm the ha other half is see here cash account has decreased by 100 so cash account has been decreased yeah see this is cash cash has been decreased so rise in the credit column of the cash book yeah 100 why it has been decreased because of the bank buy bank that's how you do the posting right i mean the recording in the cash book isn't it yes and what we do is we mark the contra entry uh, recording with the c so that we can understand this is a contra entry transaction this happened because of contra entry transaction is that okay another example is withdrawn rupees 100 from the bank if you're withdrawing then what will happen simple the cash is increasing bank is decreasing this is also a contra entry transaction cash increased bank decreased the simple general entry would have been cash account debit to bank account cash increase asset increase debit that bank is also an asset it is decreasing you have to credit that okay the recording in the double column cash book is also really simple see here cash is increasing so cash is increasing cash has to be debited because of bank yeah cash debit yeah cash debit right so cash debit write the amount in the cash column because of bank because you have withdrawn money from the bank the reason all right and then the other effect is also in the same double column cash book only that's why it's contra entry so see here bank balance has been decreased write the amount in the credit column of bank that's 100 why it has been decreased why bank balance has been decreased because of cash because you have taken cash out from the bank so buy cash simple that's how you will do the recording of contra entry transaction and this is what contra entry transactions are simple right it's easy right now let's move on to the checks in hand now here we have the concept of checks in hand this is very important from the exam point of view so listen carefully what are checks in hand checks in hand are the checks which you receive from anyone from whom you are supposed to receive the money your customer or any person from whom you are supposed to receive the money all right so when you receive the check from your customers or from anyone what happens is what you do is you take that check to the bank and deposit those checks and then the bank will take two to three days to clear those checks by clearing them they will you know put the money in your bank account your bank balance will increase so it will take two to three days now there can also be a situation where you know you got the check from your customer you deposited it with the bank okay and then you also recorded in your you know cash book that you know we have got five thousand immediately recorded also but after two to three days you can come to know that that check has been bounced that check has been dishonored okay dishonored means you haven't received the money maybe there was some error because of which the check was not cleared or maybe there was no balance in your customer's account yeah your balance has to come from somewhere now it has to come from your customer account so if there is no balance then the check will bounce so this situation can also happen but now here right now we will discuss two scenarios which you have to understand properly the first scenario is let's take this example and let's understand let's say on 1st april 2021 you received a check from your customer freddy of rupees 5000 and what you did was with that check immediately you went to the bank and deposited that check deposit it on the same day that is 1st april 2021 if you're depositing it on the same day then what you will do how the recording will happen you have to understand that properly see we will not you know consider about whether the check is cleared or not if we have deposited on the same day immediately we will do the accounting of that in the in the books what accounting forget about the subsidiary books we are not talking about subsidiary books let's talk about a simple journal entry simple journal entry would be you all know bank balance is increased by 5000 because we have got the check we deposited the check so we assume that check will be cleared and bank balance has been increased we make this assumption yeah if later we come to know then we will reverse but right now we assume that of course the check will be cleared okay freddy is a good person he will have a balance and there has been no error or nothing okay so check will be cleared so bank account debit bank balance has been increased and freddy from freddy right so to freddy account 5000 you were supposed to receive money from freddy yeah freddy was your debtor yeah so if he has paid you 5000 then he's no more an asset so you will reduce by 5000 freddy's account by 5000 yeah that's what you do modern rules of debit and credit that's how you do it debtor is an asset it is decreasing because you have received money from him you will credit that or simple interpretation is bank account debit from whom you receive the money from freddy 
okay that way also you can do it right so this would be the general entry now tell me if we are preparing the subsidiary books okay no simple general entry if we are preparing the subsidiary books then will we record this in the this transaction this transaction in the subsidiary books in the cash book will we record this yes we will why because this transaction is affecting the bank balance this transaction is affecting the bank balance so of course this will be recorded in the cash book yeah in the double column cash book in the bank column you will take this debit column of bank you will take it right bank account has been debited because of freddy that way you will take it isn't it to freddy it will come in the double column cash book here right yes that's what will happen but another situation let's talk about another situation another situation is you haven't deposited on the same day what you did was you haven't deposited on the same day you waited you waited see here deposited on a later date that is 8th of april 2021 what you did you received the check on 1st april so on 1st april you will do a recording in the books in the accounting books and that recording is because you have received from fredina the check so of course the recording must happen and this recording will happen in the journal proper what would be the general entry see here checks in hand account debit this account you will create dummy account because you have received something what is that that's an instrument a piece of paper which has a value yeah because of that check because of that piece of paper you can get 5000 in your bank account so that is something beneficial future benefit is there in that paper so that's why it's an asset so checks in hand account debit you will debit that by 5000 and you will cancel the freddy account the same way from whom you have received the check from freddy so to freddy account 5000 that way you can imagine yeah you can think then what will happen here this transaction first april transaction has this affected the cash balance or the bank balance please tell me has this transaction first april transaction affected the bank balance or cash balance no it has not it has not affected if it has not affected then no way you can record this transaction on 1st april 2021 in the cash book you cannot you cannot do the recording what will happen then the check is deposited at a later on a later date on 8th of april right so on 8th of april the simple general entry would have been if there was no subsidiary book bank account debit two checks in hand account checks in hand account the dummy account which you created that account you will cancel by an equal credit yeah here it is debited then you will cancel because that check went into the bank right you deposited the check on the 8th of april so you will cancel the checks account by making an equal credit and bank balance has been increased on 8th april yeah on 8th april so that's why this second entry this thing will be recorded in the in the cash book in the bank column bank balance has been increased okay bank debit because of checks in hand okay in this case what will happen in this case freddy name will come okay but in this case freddy name will not come understand this properly because freddy name has already been cancelled in the journal proper freddy account treatment has already been done in the journal proper in this entry this separate entry will happen in journal proper but in the cash book this entry will not happen this same effect will go by that recording okay so bank account will be debited because of checks in hand so don't make that mistake if this situation is there in the cash book in cash book question don't take to freddy we have received check from freddy no don't do that freddy account is already closed previously in the journal proper all you have to do is just take two checks in hand yeah because it is deposited at a later date is that clear you got this concept yeah you got this okay but now there's one more thing if question is silent regarding the dates whether the you know the check has been deposited on the same day or the later date okay the question is entirely silent even though when you read this this sort of uh, you know sentence receive check of 5000 from freddy what you have to do immediately you have to see you know immediately you have to see the below transaction if this is the fifth transaction 6 7 8 transaction you have to keep going down below and see whether they are saying that deposited you know at 8th april freddy's check is deposited on 8th april or 9th april if, if they are saying something like that then you will follow this approach okay if on 1st april they gave you this line and then in the 9th transaction or 10th transaction they told you check has been deposited at a later date and the date is given then you do then you will do checks in hand okay this thing you will follow this method you will follow but if 
that is not given the question is completely silent just received check of 5000 from freddy if this all is given in the question then what you will do you will follow this you will follow this see if question is silent regarding the deposit date whether it is deposited on the same day or the later date then always assume it has been deposited on the same day is that clear this is what you will do deposited on the same day and you will take bank account debit to freddy okay bank account debit you will write the amount in the bank column to freddy to the customer name from whomever you have received the check is that clear you got this yeah so that's it for this you know checks in hand concept now let's move on to the problem of double column cash book now here we have the question of double column cash book see here prepare double column cash book with cash and bank columns right so let's start let's solve this it's simple let's start with the first transaction see here april 1st 2021 cash in hand 1 lakh bank balance 50000 what is this this is the opening balance of your asset account right cash and bank so what you will do how you will record this in the double column cash book just take it on the debit side as two balance brought down you all know that right but if the bank balance this bank balance was credit balance if they would have given something over here overdraft or in the bracket credit then just the bank balance you would have taken that on the credit side as buy balance b by d okay keep that in mind so see here double column cash book you all know the format yeah this is the debit side and this is the credit side cash and bank column cash and bank column you all know this right now see the first recording april 1st two balance brought down one lakh in the cash and fifty thousand in the bank this is the money you have in cash one lakh and in the bank you have fifty thousand is that clear right easy if they would have said credit bank balance then this fifty thousand would have come over here fifty thousand by balance brought down okay right next transaction we have is see april 3rd purchase goods for cash twenty thousand see whenever you will see the question of double column cash book or any cash book what you have to do is you have to keep in your mind that i will pick only those transaction which is affecting the cash and bank balance okay like that you have to think here you are preparing cash and bank column so you have to keep in your mind i will only pick those transactions i will only record those transactions where my cash balance and bank balance is affected okay fine so here cash balance is affected because you have purchased the goods for cash so cash is decreasing cash is an asset if it is decreasing what you will do with that you will credit so cash you have to credit write the amount in the cash column that's how you will do it always remember you will not write this content you will not write the date first no what you will write first you will see whether it's debited or credited and you will write the amount first the number first okay cash is decreasing write the amount in the cash column in the credit yeah and then specify why it has decreased it has decreased because of purchases by purchases account is that clear and then write the date fine you got that april 3rd transaction april 4th transaction is see here sold goods for cash 10000 cash is increasing or decreasing cash is increasing you have sold the goods you have got the cash so of course this will be recorded because this is cash sales so see here cash is increasing right debit the cash account write the amount in the cash column 10000 why it has increased because of sales two sales april 4th simple this is how you will do it next transaction april 5th sold goods to vishnu 50000 will you record this in double column cash book this is a credit transaction here cash neither the bank balance nothing is involved yeah cash is also not involved over here and bank balance is also not involved over here because they have said you have sold goods to vishnu 50000 this is a credit transaction vishnu has promised to pay you later right so where this will go this will go in the sales book the first original recording of this transaction will happen in the sales book not in the cash book is that okay clear just ignore this transaction move on then you have april 8th transaction see here deposited into bank you all know whenever you have these two transactions withdrawal or deposit okay then those are contra entry i have already explained that to you so this is a contra entry deposited into bank 20000 why is that a contra entry because here bank balance bank account is also affected and cash account is also affected with the same amount at the same time and all right 
so deposited into the bank so bank is increasing bank is increasing by 20000 cash is decreasing by 20000 first let's record the effect on the bank okay so bank is increasing bank balance is increasing so see here bank balance is increasing bank is your asset if it's increasing then what you will do you will debit the bank account write the amount in the bank column see here write the amount in the bank column bank has increased by 20000 why it has increased because you have put the cash into the bank so to cash account and then mark this transaction this recording as contra entry in the ledger folio column see all right fine and then the other effect also you have to show which is in the cash column right see here because of this thing what happened the second effect the second effect is cash has decreased the cash went into the bank so cash in hand decreased so that's why cash is decreasing means you have to credit the cash account yeah so credit the cash account right in the cash column the amount 20,000 cash has been credited by 20,000 because of bank clear mark the transaction with C to specify that this is a contra entry recording okay April 8 is that clear fine let's move on next transaction you have a see here on April 9th you have paid to arrive by check maybe he's your supplier or something paid to arrive by check 10,000 now here don't go on and think about you know that checks in hand concept no that concept does not apply to the payment checks no checks in hand concept which we discussed just minutes ago that only applies to the to what to the checks which you receive from your customers or from anyone you are supposed to get the payment not on this here you are making the payment through the check so that concept does not apply to this transaction is that okay yeah don't make the mistakes okay it's a silly mistake don't make that fine so what's happening over here you have paid to rife by check when you will write the check and when you will give it to rife immediately you will record in the double column cash book that my bank balance has decreased because you have given the check now rife will take that check and will deposit that check and he will get the money your bank balance will decrease but it will decrease after two to three days but still immediately you will record that in the cash book okay this logic you should have immediately you will record it fine immediately so april 9th only you will record this see here on april 9th what will happen what has happened your bank balance has decreased credit the bank account credit the bank account write the amount in the bank column 10000 it has been decreased bank balance has been decreased credit because you have given the check to rife you have made the payment to rife by rife account this has happened on april 9th fine you got this next transaction april 11th sold goods to freddy and received check of 80,000. Now here the checks in hand concept comes into picture, right? This concept. Now you have to identify whether it is case one or case two, deposited on the same day or deposited on a later date. You have to identify this. How will you identify this? It's simple. What you have to do? Just by reading this, you have to see whether they are saying that check has been deposited on the same day or not. Nothing. In this line, you cannot understand anything. See here, sold goods to Freddy, okay, and received check of 80,000. But they are not talking about deposit or anything, nothing. Then what you have to do? Just look below, okay, the next transaction. Till the end, you have to see whether they are mentioning anything regarding this. See here, April 13, nothing. April 15, no. April 19, they are saying, Freddy's check deposited into the bank. Yes, so what is this? What does this mean it gives you the idea that the check has been deposited at a later date so this is the case two yeah this scenario deposited on a later date so if it is deposited on a later date then what will happen what will happen checks in hand account debit this will happen in the proper journal this exact entry will be passed not the same amount maybe the amount is different here amount is 80,000 over here okay so checks in hand account debit 80,000 to freddy account 80000 this entry will be passed on which date on april 11th okay all the concepts i have explained previously i will not go into that again you will record this in the proper journal this exact entry 80000 80000 not 5000 this was a conceptual yeah now here then what will happen on april 19 what will happen on april 19 this sort of recording not this exact entry this sort of 
recording with the same effect will be done in the cash book what is that checks in hand account has to be credited to cancel it yeah so what will happen see here i will show you now see here on april 19 yeah see on april 19 what will happen the bank balance has increased isn't it bank balance has been increased you have got the check you deposited the check on april 19 so your bank balance increased you see here bank account debit 80000 bank account debit yeah 80000 bank increased by 80000 because of that check in hand because of that check in hand not freddy freddy account is already taken care of in the journal proper previously you will not take freddy account over here that's a big big mistake and a most frequent mistake that students make yeah when they have this second scenario what they do is they immediately take over here to freddy no that's entirely wrong you should not do that clear fine you got that so this is what you will do but but let me just give you another scenario also if if for example if nothing was there this april 19 this line was not there in the question nothing was there then what would have happened if only this april 11th is there and nothing no detail the question is completely silent whether the check is deposited on the same day or at a later date then what you will do is you will consider the question as first scenario deposited on the same day and what will happen in the double column cash book is you will take 80,000 to Freddy. Bank balance increase because of Freddy and you will take which date? This date only, April 11. Okay, so both the things I, you know, discuss with you. The second scenario, which is the case in this question and then, you know, if the question is silent, then you have to assume this scenario. Clear, you got that. Practically, you got that completely. Fine, let's move on. Next, on April 13, we have this transaction. See here, paid commission by cash, 10,000. Now, this is a simple transaction. What has happened? Cash is decreasing. So just credit the cash, write in the cash column, 10,000 because of commission. Yeah, cash has decreased. It has been credited because of the commission which you have paid. Clear? Easy. Now, one more thing, okay? If let's say, for example, they didn't say buy cash if they you know if they would have said only paid commission still you will consider the payment has been made by cash whenever the question is silent regarding which mode of payment is done yeah whether cash or bank then you will always assume it was it is cash okay always assume it is cash okay fine next transaction see here april 15 withdrawn from bank for personal use now whenever personal use comes you have to understand you have to take drawings account owner is taking the money to his home yeah not for business business is separate owner is separate entity concept right so what you have to do is you have to take drawings account over here and this is not a contra entry this is not a contra entry of course this is withdrawal from the bank but still this is not a contra entry because drawings account is involved over here bank account is decreasing withdrawal has been done but cash is not increasing over here understand that properly that cash account is of the business but here who is getting the money who is getting that cash personal use drawings drawings. this will hit drawings account not cash account this is not a contra entry see the recording over here see here bank balance has been decreased 5000 because withdrawal has been done by the owner for personal use so bank balance has been decreased bank balance credit write the amount in the bank column but it has been decreased because of personal use so buy drawings account okay not cash this is not a contra entry buy drawings is that clear fine april 15 fine let's move on next transaction you see here april 19 freddy's check okay that's that's done right freddy's check that's done let's move on april 20 withdrawn from bank now this is a contra entry of course you know that see two things are there withdrawn from bank for personal use this is not a contra entry withdrawn from bank for office use or if the question is silent then that is contra entry fine so this is contra entry withdrawn from bank 50000 so how you will do this bank balance is decreasing yes because of withdrawal bank balance is decreasing so credit the bank account 50000 because of cash yeah april 20 and then the other effect you have to show in the cash column see here what has happened the cash increase because you have made the withdrawal you got the cash so cash is increasing cash debit write the amount in the cash column in the debit side because of the withdrawal from the bank so two bank account 
and mark the transaction contra contra clear got it fine the next is see here april 24 paid salary 40000 now they haven't mentioned the mode of payment how you have paid it cash or bank what you have to do you have to assume it's always cash 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 so just reduce the cash account cash is decreasing cash credit write the amount in the cash column 40000 because you have paid salary to your employee by salary account clear easy right april 24 this is how you will do that then next you have on april 26 at last they are saying the last transaction deposit into bank after retaining 10000 for office use now you have to understand this this is the most critical point and you know this is very important from the exam point of view what are they saying is see what you have to do just keep the cash 10,000 in the business remaining whatever extra cash you have all of that cash just deposit that into the bank keep 10,000 aside and remaining cash just put it into the bank just deposit that into the bank so what you have to do now you have to see how much cash is left first okay how much cash is left first that's what you have to identify so how you will identify that it's simple see here let me just show you one lakh okay till here we have done right till where till here we have done till now yeah so one lakh you have plus ten thousand plus fifty thousand that's equal to how much 160 160 cash you have now you have to go on deducting all the payments you have made okay so see the payments over here 160 minus 20,000 minus again 20,000 then again minus commission 10,000 and then salary you paid 40,000 so subtract that and then what else yeah that's it yeah that's it so after deducting that you have 70,000 uh, cash left with you 70,000 cash left with you what the question is saying keep the 10,000 aside and remaining out of that 70,000 just deposit that into the bank yeah that's what the question is saying so what you will do see it's simple April 30 by balance carried down this is the closing balance so closing balance of the cash account should be 10,000 that is what this is saying 10,000 yeah retain 10,000 at last so by balance carry down 10,000 you will take this over here and then as a balancing figure you will make the what do you say you will make the deposit so 70,000 you had if you're keeping aside 10,000 then remaining 60,000 yeah minus 10 if you're keeping the 10,000 aside then the remaining 60,000 has to be deposited into the bank contra entry yeah contra entry here you have a contra entry yeah you have to deposit into the bank so how you will do that simple you all know how you will deposit it's simple cash will decrease isn't it cash will decrease so see here cash is decreasing you have to credit the cash write the amount in the cash column 60,000 because 60,000 you are depositing because of the deposit you have made into the bank isn't it yes other effect you have to show in the bank column see here because of this deposit bank has increased by 60,000 so debit the bank account yeah debit the bank account write the amount in the bank column 60,000 it has increased bank balance has increased because of cash to cash account mark these transaction as contra contra entry fine yes so cash account is completely balanced yeah 160 160 okay this total is 160 okay and then this total is also 160 is that clear because 10,000 you kept aside and remaining whatever was there you put that into the bank so cash column is done first always you will balance the cash column okay and then move to the bank column now in the bank column it's simple everything is done see here always you know mostly all the time debits will be bigger in the bank column just in case of overdraft but still you have to check properly okay see here 50 plus 20 plus 80 plus 60 that's equal to 2 lakh 10,000 so 2 lakh 10,000 on both the sides in the total column 2 lakh 10 2 lakh 10 and then just go on deducting from the credit side minus 10 minus 5 minus 50 minus yeah that's it that's equal to 1 lakh 45,000 1 lakh 45,000 that's the closing balance done now what you have to do 
now you have to carry forward this balance to the next day that is 1st may the next accounting period to balance brought down this 10000 will come over here and this 145000 will come over here this is how you have to do this is that clear easy right so that's it for this video see you in the next video bye okay this is how you have to do it